I wanted to graduate up from the little portable power stations and build something a little bit bigger with uh, some batteries that I could potentially expand myself or a system where I could swap out the inverter. And so I reached out to Renegy and they offered to send me the equipment for this build. So thank you Renegy for doing that. I still had to buy a whole bunch of stuff to make this happen. And as I was buying all of the stuff that I needed for this project, wire cutters, wire, some connectors, circuit breakers, power strip, hydraulic crimper, terminal lugs, this project started getting pretty expensive. Renegy also sent out that guy. That thing's the Lycan 5000. That's a product that they make, which is essentially the same inverter that I've got here, the same batteries that I'm gonna be using. It's identical equipment from the same company. And in looking at all the stuff that you get with the Lycan 5000, when I was buying all of the pieces to put this project together, I started to ask myself, how could I recommend doing this project if immediately after I'm supposed to review that thing, which costs less than all of the materials that I needed to get this project done. And you should just buy that thing if you don't have any of this stuff already. But if you do already have a battery bank or maybe you already have their inverter or you have other tools and things that you wanna to put together, that's maybe where you should follow along on this project. I am going to still build the power station, but maybe we'll learn some stuff along the way. And for the solar input, Renegy sent out two 550 watt monocrystalline solar panels. This is gonna be a lot more reliable than the portable solar array of hodgepodge panels that I've put together. Even though the array that I had out there should provide roughly the same amount of solar, I'm getting about 20% more output with the Renogy panels. Probably because they're the same brand and the same voltage and the same current and everything kind of lines up. And when you're creating a solar array of a whole bunch of identical panels, you're generally going to have slightly better results than if you mix brands. Now I tried laying the array flat on my hot tub with just using some of the packing foam to kind of level it out, but it was never really at the right angle. So I bought the cheapest solar ground mount kit that I could find, which happened to be from Renogy. It was really easy to install and I was able to point the panels in the direction that I needed to. And by the time you're watching this, these panels have been up in my backyard for several months through crazy California Santa Ana winds, 50 to 70 mile per hour gusts, and they are not going anywhere. They're pretty heavy. Anyways, we can get our hand truck tomorrow. Right now we can start some of the wiring. Here we go. So this is where the MC4 connectors need to connect to for solar. So we just have to cut a little hole in this guy. And we take these MC4 connectors, stick them in there. This one's for negative. Nice and tight. And this one will be used for connecting our positive wire. I pushed it through first and then removed the little rubber piece so it didn't get all frayed. All right, PV input done. Next up, we've got our AC input and output. And I wanted to use this power strip as both the AC input and output. So I need to know where I'm gonna be putting this power strip on the dolly so I can leave enough slack to wire it into that AC output. And then whatever's left over is how long my power cord for charging it off the grid is going to be. But mainly I will be charging this with solar anyways. But since we don't have the dolly, we can't really measure that out yet. What we can do is get the battery terminals ready. We've got the negative battery terminal there and the positive battery terminal there. The manual says, for battery wiring, it's recommended that you use two gauge wire for 120 amps. You get to use these nice new wire cutters. Of course, that was the four gauge wire and we need two gauge. What's nice is the uh, Rena G inverter does come with a couple of these terminal lugs for your battery. I do not have the right tool for this. Oh, that kind of worked. There we go. Let's see if we can get that in there. There's gotta be a trick to this. Can't get it all in there. You supposed to not be able to get it all in there? This is crazy. All right, I'm trying something else. <laughs> it worked. Got it, look at that. Just gotta crimp it now. That's not going anywhere. Don't forget the heat shrink tubing. It's not perfect, but it'll do. So the way this battery Anderson connector works is I put the positive, which will be connected to this into here, negative into the other side, obviously. And then I'll hook this side up to my batteries and then I can just plug in and unplug my batteries 
really quickly. All right, we'll cut it about right there. And look, this connector came with a flared little insert, so I don't need to do that zip tie thing. This should just work. There we go. Got them all. I've never made these cables before, but it's pretty easy. I guess we'll stick the positive into the positive here. Look at that. Just kind of slides right in. Into the negative. Slide these in here. And get them connected. And so I installed these lugs backwards, believe it or not. This is going to be my negative, this is my positive. But they have to be like this, because if I do them like this, then they'll be upside down. So anyways, I just have to cross the wires to install them like this. Here's what the bottom of our inverter looks like now. I got this, uh, I guess, Franklin brand dolly from Harbor Freight, uh, well, hand truck rather. Uh, and it's got these shields on it, so the batteries, they won't come in contact with the wheels while I'm rolling it around. So let's lay that flat. And I went to Home Depot and I picked up a couple of these U-bolts and we're gonna use that to attach it to that bar right there. Let's see if this works. Yeah, just like that. And there we go. But I don't like that, so just for good measure, we're gonna add a ratchet strap. All right, I think I'm gonna put my power strip uh, right here like this. I only need about this much cable. Need a couple of those. We can give ourselves a little bit of slack here. So let's cut it about here. This will be our AC power cord. Now we just gotta strip this and put it into the AC out and that will power up our power strip when we connect this thing to batteries. So while wiring these up, L is black, N would be white, and G is ground. It should look kind of like that. Then we should be able to put this piece back on. There we go. Looks pretty good. We got our battery cables, PV, solar cables, AC power cable, and our power strip. All we need now is our batteries. I've been trying to figure out how to position these batteries on here in a decent way, and I think I finally figured it out. Let's give this a shot. There we go, that's not so bad. Just get rid of some of that extra we don't need. In the spirit of keeping this simple, we've got this 200 amp DC rated resettable fuse. We're gonna go ahead and use that. So this end is gonna connect to my batteries and this end is gonna go out to the inverter. All right, I've made a couple more cables. This one's gonna go from the negative terminal of my battery to the Anderson connector, and this one's gonna go from the fuse to positive end of the Anderson connector. Connector done. Now we can wire up this piece. Trip that. We can probably put that right there. Maybe like that. We're almost done. We've got a couple more pieces we're gonna add. We've got the Bluetooth module, a communications hub, and some ethernet wire so we can put this thing on Bluetooth. We're almost done here. We've got our negatives. We've got our negatives connected there. We've got our positives connected here. <laughs> We've also got the resettable fuse up here, and then those both terminate into this Anderson connector here. And these we can just connect to our batteries. To this one. 
connect this one. Right here. Oh man, I think we're almost done. Yeah, we've got our Bluetooth connected right there. Well, we're basically done here. All we've got to do is plug the batteries in, turn them on, flip the switch, and we'll see what happens. Little button, we've got to push one, three, and they both turned on, perfect. You can see our hub and our Bluetooth are, they got our green lights on here, so they're turned on, they're good to go. Of course, we've got the aperture MC light here for style points. Our inverter switch is over here, we're gonna flip that. Reflection. There we go. You can see we've got our green lights. Let's turn it on. All right, battery's looking good. We've got our load, 120 volts. And we've got power. All right, this is kind of messy. I'm gonna do some cable management and we'll be right back. Moment of truth here, let's power up the studio with the new power station. Using Renogy's DC Home app, because I've got the Bluetooth module, I can see what the charge is, how much power I'm using. There, so we can see right now my batteries hit are about 67% and my studio is using about 350 watts. We've got 3,500 watts of output with surges of up to seven kilowatts, Bluetooth connectivity, over four kilowatts of solar input, with up to 150 volts. We've got our solar coming in. We've got the batteries plugged in. Our AC inverter is turned on and working the way it's supposed to. Uh, you can't really see the screen because it's kind of too bright, but I'm gonna show you a screenshot of the Bluetooth app that I've got on my phone. And our project is finished. You're gonna get a lot of value out of doing a project like this yourself if this is something you wanna learn about. You'll have tools that you can use to uh, expand your system if you do it yourself. And if something breaks on your system, you'll be able to fix it yourself. If you wanna find any of the components that are used in this build, make sure you uh, check the links in the description of this video. So if you're interested in stuff like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.